Hello and welcome to video one of the rolling mill. What is embossing? Well, embossing is pressing a design into metal. You've got a metal blank like this. You've probably sawed it, filed it, sanded it, and it's ready to be embossed. So you're gonna take a little piece of wire, wrap it into the shape you want, and press it into your metal. And it should look something like this when you're done, or this. This has some Byzantine chain on it. It's a bracelet. And here's the embossed section. It is the cursive word, hello. If you need help with cursive, let me know. I love cursive. I'm really good at it. Um, you can do something like this, which is just some designs and patterns. See, there are some spirals on here. This person paired it with some stamping. You can see the cross stamp. It got a little bungled up, but there's a couple nice stamps there and there and in the corners. Here's some more embossing examples. This person did a leaf, and as you can see, it got a little messed up, which is why this student didn't end up taking it home. She donated it to me, but the rest of it's quite successful and beautiful. Here's another leaf with some simple embossing and some rings. We've got some random spirals and we've got some designs just just this simple diagonal design um, turned out really well because they really planned it and they did a great job of making sure everything was even now this person didn't plan so well and they didn't size it correctly and the design is going off the edge it looks a little rushed and so i'm going to talk you through the design part of your process today so that it looks really finished and complete this one or like this one, or like this one. Okay, so let's talk about um, planning for your embossing. First off, what can and can't be embossed? Um, copper, brass, silver, gold, all those can be embossed. The thing that cannot be embossed is steel because steel will ruin the machine, the rollers on the machine. I have got some steel wire in my lab, which I hide from you because it's really important to me that that steel not touch the steel rollers, it will ruin them. In video three, I talk about how to use this machine, but this is just a quick picture of it. It's got some steel rollers down here, and anytime steel touches steel, it leaves little mars in the surface, and we wanna really take care of this because this machine is probably the most expensive machine in the whole jewelry lab. So make sure you watch video two and three before ever even touching this rolling mill machine. Okay, another thing that won't work in that rolling mill is aluminum or tin because they're just a bit too thin. You need some thickness to your metal in order to emboss, which brings me to my next big point. What designs will and won't work on your embossing? Make sure to do a bunch of sketching in your sketchbook before you start creating your embossing piece. Here are some sketches that I've done um, designs that will work are swirls, zigzags, spirals. In these two, I have planned on some stamping as well. You can pair those two, or you can just have an image, cursive. You can do little individual pieces like this, or like this, that's totally doable. You can have it be symmetrical or asymmetrical. You can have it be an object, like a contour line drawing of a sword, or a fork, or a flower. But if you're going to do something like a flower, there's something to keep in mind that's pretty important. But you could do organic shapes or geometric shapes. Um, it is okay to go off the edges but there's something to keep in mind. So remember that ring, they kind of went whoop off the edge. That's okay. But what's gonna happen is the edge of your piece is gonna warp just a little bit. There's just going to be a little tiny bump in those spots where it goes off the edge. It's just like kind of pressing a pancake almost. It'll just get a little flatter there. And that's totally easy to deal with. You just take your file and file off the edge of that. No problem. 
you can overlap your wire, but only once. If my design is something like a spiral and then part of a heart and then maybe I want it to be like a arrow or something like that, it overlapped right here and that's okay. But it will not work if I overlap in that same spot again. So this students do and it's a problem because you've got a stem and a petal, boom, overlapped once. And another petal, uh-oh, it overlapped the same spot again. And another petal, uh-oh, it overlapped the same spot again. And again, so I actually have four overlaps right here. And that's really bad because there's only so much thickness to your metal. And when you press down into it, you are pressing down and you're creating a little cavity, a little, um, valley in your metal. Do you see the little valley that you're creating? And there's only so much space to make that valley because there's only so much thickness to your metal. So I've got this drawing here. Let's say I have my wire going across like this and that carves down into it just a little bit. And then let's say I have another piece right here and it's overlapping and so that carves into it just a little bit more and that's okay. Except if I do it again, I'm almost completely through my metal and if I do it again, I am completely through my metal. And so what will happen here is bad news. It will mess up your design. It'll get really super, super warped and the really, really bad news is it'll get stuck in the roller. You'll try and roll it through, it'll get stuck. You'll feel like you've broken the machine. You didn't break the machine, but you definitely could if you kept cranking on it. So we definitely don't wanna do this. The solution to this is to do multiple runs. So you would do one pedal, there's the overlap and run it through the machine and take off the wire. And then your next pedal, run it through the machine. And it's okay, you're not doing the overlap because there's already a valley here. So you're not having four pieces of wire over the top of one another. Run it through, take the wire off and do another pass. Run it through, take the wire off, do another pass. So the four individual passes, okay? And that's the way you can get around the rule of only one overlap, but in general, we're going to say only one overlap at a time is allowed. Okay, the final idea here for what designs will work and what designs won't work is that a lot of wire will stretch out your metal just a bit. Do you see how there's much less wire being used here than here? There's a lot of wire in that spiral. And so it's going to actually stretch the metal just a bit. Now, it's usually fine unless you were to do something like this. Let's say I do something here and then lots of metal down here, lots of metal, lots of metal, maybe some spirals, maybe some zigzags. I don't know. Maybe that's your design. What's going to happen here is all this is going to press down into your metal and it's going to make your metal expand just a bit at the bottom it'll warp it a little bit i'm not super worried about it because you know what we can do you can just file the edges down but it's something to think about in your planning so once you've done lots and lots of sketching coming up with every possible idea that you might want to do it's time to do your final sketch to scale to do that, simply get your piece of metal, trace it or measure with the ruler, and get an exact replica of what that piece of metal looks like, and do your final sketch the exact right size, because you're going to need it to be the exact size for the next step in video two of preparing to emboss. 
If you would like some more advanced options on how to really take this a step farther, you can actually use the wire to illustrate um, a design like this or like this. These are all advanced options or even a face or something like that um, with more pieces of wire and doing more of a drawing illustrative technique. That's it for video one on how to prepare your and plan how to plan for your embossing. Um, before you watch video two, your job is to complete your planning, complete your sketching, sketching to scale. And once you've got your final sketch and you have completed your sketch to scale, then you can go ahead and watch video two, which is how to prepare to emboss.